Welcome to our Holy Evening Prayer Worship. Uh, we gather together on these midweek uh, services during Lent uh, to spend time reflecting on the way that Jesus is the light in our dark times. Tonight we continue our topic of Eyes on Jesus. We're looking at different characters who are looking at Jesus and maybe seeing Jesus incorrectly. We reflect on the own, our own ways, the ways that we misunderstand uh, who Jesus is. Uh, follow along with our bulletin. You can find it on our website, uh, download it there, and follow along with our worship together. Jesus Christ, you're the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. together Psalm 141. It's broken up into a round. We begin by all singing together, and then group one is led with Jacob and Jean on the piano side, and I will lead group two on this side. Let my prayer rise. 
Tonight is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, and we skip a portion uh, and conclude with verses 53 through 65. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that has been made by hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. This is the gospel of the Lord. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Well, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight we reflect on the eyes of the chief priests and their murdering eyes. If looks could kill, you've heard the phrase, I'm sure. Well, it was Friday night, and our high school marching band was about to take the field during the halftime of our football game. Our school, the O'Fallon Panthers, were playing against our rival, the Belleville East Lancers. It had been an ugly game. 
Lots of hard tackles on the field, lots of trash talk from the stands. Our approach to the end zone had us marching right by the guest bleachers, filled with those nasty lancers. Our director informed us that not a word would be spoken, and if it were, then all we had to look forward to was detention for the rest of the week. But he didn't say anything about our eyes. So as we walked by those stands, with words and insults hurled our way that I dare not even repeat here in church, you should have seen our eyes. Each of us narrowed our eyes as sharp as daggers, sending hatred their way. The next day was the IMEA Music Festival, where musicians from all over Illinois are gathered together for a day filled with music instruction and then a wonderful concert at the end of the day. Well, I walked into the recital hall, took my trumpet out of its case, and was making my way to my seat, and that's when I noticed there, sitting right next to my seat, was a lancer, leather jacket and all. My blood immediately began to boil as I took my seat in awkward silence. As the day went on, he began to loosen up a little bit. He loaned me his pencil. I loaned him my valve oil for his trumpet. And I began to realize that he was actually an okay trumpet player, for a lancer, of course. But then by the end of the day, we became pretty good friends. It just reminds me how easily we are divided. Religion divides us. My grandpa told my mom to marry a good Christian boy, that she should find a good Christian boy, as long as he wasn't Catholic. A good Christian boy. Well, sorry, Grandpa. I married a Catholic girl, and she's not all that bad. I was raised a baseball purist, and it was St. Louis Cardinals all the way. But somehow, my daughter Marilyn is a Cubs fan, but I still claim her. We're divided by politics, nationality, gender, and race, and we let these become walls between us. Walls that not only keep us apart, but leave us hurtling insults and evil eyes and ill wishes, even violent actions that hurt, abuse, and can even kill one another. Well, tonight's reading from Mark, we hear about the chief priests and the scribes and their plot to kill Jesus. When he was arrested, he was taken to Caiaphas, the high priest, and the look on Caiaphas' face must have been similar to uh, a look they could kill. He only saw someone who challenged his own religious beliefs and practices, someone who was gaining notoriety, someone who was capable of diminishing Caiaphas' power over the people. And when that is all that he saw, he swiftly put a plan in motion to have Jesus killed. Another high school story. When I was in high school, one of my dreams for the future was to be a geneticist and work in the level four biohazard zone at the CDC, working with Ebola and antivirus and other viruses. I read lots of books like Stephen King's The Stand and Michael Crichton's Andromeda Strain, Richard Preston's The Hot Zone. I think my parents thought I was crazy. Probably was. But my fascination for these viruses stemmed from their indiscriminate efficiency. They don't ask what church you go to or what baseball team you like. They don't ask who you voted for or where your citizenship lies. Their only aim is to find a host and replicate. So in this odd way, I really respected their simplicity, admired it even. Now we find all of ourselves sheltered in place due to a simple, indiscriminate virus. It doesn't see us as black and white, or Republican or Democrat, Cards or Cubs fan. It doesn't look at us the way that we look at one another. And I wonder, maybe, maybe we can change. As I sit home and watch the occasional jogger run by, when I make a stealthy trip to the grocery store, uh, cautiously steering my car at least six feet away from others in the aisles, and when I FaceTime family or Zoom colleagues, also hold up in their own homes, my eyes are opened, and I realize something. We are all in this together. And then I smile an extra smile to those on Facebook or on Zoom. I wave an extra enthusiastic wave at the random jogger going by, almost scaring him, I think, to where he runs into the tree or something. And I gladly thank the checker who hands me my receipt at the grocery store. Those differences, those differences that destructively divided us last week, 
they mean less to us today. In the face of a pandemic, our murderous eyes need to be transformed into eyes that look beyond the surface and see one another simply as children of God. Eyes of compassion that see a collective humanity, a global community in need, in mutual need. And when our eyes are changed, so are our actions. No longer do we find ourselves racing to grab the extra toilet paper when we already have plenty at home. No longer are we ignoring the elderly woman living next door, but instead make a phone call to reach out and look out for her and see how she's doing. Our eyes are changed to see one another differently, and that changes us so that we can act differently as well. So it's not LASIK surgery. Maybe you could call it corona surgery. Corona surgery that changes our corneas, changing our focus to see not with our own eyes of judgment and division, but to see with the eyes of God. So I ask you, what do you think God's eyes see? God doesn't see black and white or red and blue. In two weeks we'll celebrate that God looks upon people unworthy of love. <clears throat> God looks at us unworthy of love with nothing but compassion. When Jesus looks down from the cross, instead of words of judgment, he speaks words of forgiveness and love and life. So how are your eyes? Where have you given the evil eye? Or where have you given looks that can kill? Look at your eyes. Look at the world around us. Let this experience change the way that we see one another and change the way that we act. Because I think it's time for us to have some corona surgery. We now continue with our prayers. Uh, we'll hear the melody first, hum through it once, and then sing through our refrain. Source and ground of all goodness and life, 
Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for joining us for worship this evening. Uh, if you worship with us on Facebook, I encourage you to, to like this uh, post and share it with others. Maybe you found us on YouTube. Uh, go to our website to our online worship and you can find our online worship services. Share those with friends as well. May this be a time where we can gather together, even in the isolation of our own homes. Gather together in worship to nurture our faith and to be one body of Christ. May this be a time where our eyes are opened and we see more clearly who God is, what God is doing, and that we are, by all, above all else, 